Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Cause you make me feel like I've been locked out of hell. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. UBNRadio.com She's passionate about telling stories of amazing women who are rocking the world and empowering women to live, love, and thrive. Here's your host, Katherine Gray. Hi, welcome, welcome to Live, Love, Thrive Women's Empowerment Hour, brought to you by, of course, 360karma.com. We hope you're joining our Women's Empowerment Conversation on our Facebook and also following us on Twitter and uh, Instagram at My360Karma. And today we have on two very powerful women that just flew in from Madison, Wisconsin. We're so happy to have them here. They've created an event there called Disrupt Madison, and they are some mover and shaker ladies. I want to introduce you to Corrine Woodman and also Laura G. Minder. Hopefully I got those right. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank Hi. you. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are Good. you? So how different is L.A. from Madison? Uh, we dodge a star- snowstorm, so we're really excited to be here <laughs> <laughs> in the sunshine. So, yeah, yeah. Nobody ever seems to complain about our weather, like ever. Yeah. I know. We're so spoiled here. Uh, it, beautiful day. And uh, so you you guys flew in because you are, uh, Laura, you're going to be speaking at the Bakersfield Conference yes. uh, in, of course, Bakersfield, California. How exciting is that? Yes. This is a women's conference. It is. It's yeah. a women's, they, their 28th year, and they are expecting about 2,000 ladies. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Wow, 2,000. <laughs> I, I didn't even know 2,000 women lived in Bakersfield. That, yeah, that's amazing. They come from all over the area. Wow, that is so cool. I love that. And um, is this your first out-of-city conference that you'll be Out of the at? Midwest. Yeah. So it was a goal of mine to do something for business in California and bring Good my empowering you. message to the women here. Good for you. And you're a women's empowerment coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, Corrine, you, um, you two met when you all created an event called Disrupt Madison and Disrupt Milwaukee. That is correct. Right. Yes. And, and, and so... Um, what are those events about? Uh, those are about empowering women. Those events about um, empowering everyone. Empowering everyone. Yes. We like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So great. It's, an, it's an event experience uh, that Laura and I produce. Um, we are uh, probably around a thousand strong community in Wisconsin. Nice. And we do about anywhere from ten to twelve rapid fire five minute talks with twenty slides rotating at five minutes each. Oh my gosh. Five seconds. Five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, 15, <laughs> 15 seconds. So I'll say they get five minutes. Five minutes is your talk. You get 20 slides. And then those slides rotate at 15 seconds each. Oh my gosh. And these are on different topics. Is it kind of TED, like a TED talk? It's similar. Sort of. Yep. It's yeah. all about um, the future of work and the world of work. I love it. And Lauren, our our view, uh, mine and Laura's, is that everyone works, no matter what you do. You're a stay-at-home mom, yeah. you work. You are volunteer, you work. Everybody has an economic benefit that they're giving. So. I, I like that you're uh, validating that because, yes. you know, so many people are, you know, are stay-at-home moms or artists mm-hmm. or writers, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, people need to validate all of those things, no matter what you're yes. doing, you know, dog walker, whatever, yeah, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Everybody has a gift and they're giving back in their own way. And my hope is through 360 Karma is always that people are doing what they love. Yeah. Don't you agree that's the most important thing in life? It is. Are you, are you doing what makes your heart sing? Yeah. I know your title is uh, Passion Igniter. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I can really relate to what you shared because for so long I wasn't doing work that I truly loved. Right. And so it's been life changing for me to make this shift. Right. So let's talk a little bit about that because I think a lot of people are in the boat that you were in where, and there's nothing wrong with a corporate job because some people love and thrive in that. Mm -hmm. Yes. But for you, corporate America was not your passion and you Mm -hmm. finally ventured out to create your own company where you help other people find their passion. Yes. And I can tell you're very passionate about that. (laughs) I am. I am, definitely. Yeah. Um, 
What in your background led you to the work that you're doing? I, I know you grew up in Madison and, uh, you know, your your family, you worked in your family business at very young, which is something you both have in mm-hmm. common, yes. right? Yes. Uh, Corrine, your family started a grocery store chain? Yes. Um, yeah. My great-grandfather started yeah. Woodman's Food Markets. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Way so, back at the turn of the century. So, so as mm-hmm. children, you were both in working in the family businesses, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And what kind of business was your family in? Um, my grandpa started a siding and roofing business, and my dad took it over as a siding business. So as a little girl, I was answering customer calls. I on love phone. it. <laughs> I love it. And you were taking money and h- handling that at like 10 years old or something? 10 years old. I was counting bad check money. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, you know, what a wonderful foundation for you young ladies because not all girls have that upbringing where they're brought up in the family mm-hmm. business. In fact, often I've noticed uh, sometimes uh, they'll bring the sons in but not the woman. Oh, the little woman's meant to go make babies and get married or, you know, mm-hmm. that was the culture, you know, at the time. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that seems to be changing and evolving. And, yes. you know, it's good that uh, women like you are creating these magnificent platforms like Disrupt uh, Madison and Milwaukee to to change that culture, you know, and put a value on everything that people are doing. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what... You know, I always like to share on this show, too, obstacles that people have had because I figure my listeners can identify with that. And you shared with me, Corinne, that your uh, parents divorced when you were very young as well. Yes, yeah. yes. Very young and around six years old. And, um, you know, I've always carried that with me. And I'm still tr- still trying to figure out, you know, what it is. If I even should figure out, you know, what it is that has, uh, you know, as a child um, made me internalize what was going on with my parents because that was theirs. And, and, you know, I had my own things. But why would I why was I internalizing their dispute? Right. So, yeah, kids do tend to personalize it, don't mm -hmm. they feel like that it was somewhere their responsibility. And, you know, and then having your mom leave at a young age, I'm sure, has impacted who you are today. How did how did that affect you positively and negatively? You know, that, that's the question I'm still trying to, to figure out. I know that I did go through a um, depression when I was in high school and mm-hmm. in college, you know, when my my formative, formative young woman years. Yeah. And I've worked through that. And, you know, I still get depressed now and then. And mm-hmm. I still have some, you know, issues. But, you know, I know that it's going to end. So yeah. I'm, I'm just kind to myself, and I, I wait it out, and I and I have support, and um, those around me know that if you know, I'm going through a depressive moment, that you know they're very supportive and they're kind to me also. So you know, I really appreciate your vulnerability. You know, it's a uh, uh, Brene Brown says sharing our vulnerabilities makes us stronger. Mm-hmm. And so for people listening who must be going, wow, she's being really honest. You know, I think there's ten other people out there saying. Oh, I identify with what she's saying. Yeah. You know, most people do go in these ups and downs. Things are not always rosy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what you're saying is you wait it out. Like you have these depressive moments or, as you explained it, like moments of anxiety. And then you ride it out and then better times come back. Yes. Yeah. 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 How do? What would you say to somebody who's going through that uh, difficult time right now? Uh what, what would be your advice to them? Tomorrow's another day. Yeah. 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 I always say 24 hours, what a difference the day makes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And and surrounding yourself, right, with supportive, loving people. Yes. Yes. You know, My, support group is mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, don't find isolate. Your, find your tribe. You know, Laura, Laura is very supportive. My husband's very supportive. Yeah. My family is very supportive. Yeah. I think a lot of people uh, experience anxiety, so I appreciate you sharing that with us. And um, is there anything else that would help motivate someone out of that exercise or or just maybe belonging to a group and creating a community? You said find your tribe. I think that's a wonderful solution. Yes, and I also think that, you know, um, my yoga teacher, um, her name is Suki Warda, she always says to me, find moments where you can be a little bit uncomfortable because that's where the growth happens. Yes. Well, that wasn't it Eleanor Roosevelt that said, do something every day that makes you fearful. Mm-hmm. So um, 
I, I'm a big believer in that because I always think if you're not doing something every day that makes you a little bit fearful, it's going to get kind of boring. That's yes. that's my outlook. I know a lot of people like that, just you know, complacency, but it's not where I want to live. No. Yeah, I can tell that's the way with you two as well. Yes. So you grew up and you had some controversial things yourself. I know you grew up yes. in a great family and yes. everything, but uh, you shared a me too, me too moment with me. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. I first uh, spoke about it last May publicly, and it was uh, because I was speaking at the, the Dream Bank in Madison, Wisconsin. I do motivational yeah. speaking there, and I was talking about your flaws some and how your flaws make you awesome yeah. and it was just not coming together and I was when I really thought about it it was because I wasn't being truly vulnerable right. and I wasn't at I wasn't sharing what my biggest flaw was. I'm a peach and I have a bruise and I embrace that and I'm a survivor. Yes. And I'm able to do the women's empowerment because of some of the things that I went through. I, right. um, it was a next door neighbor who's a grandfather figure to me. I was um, best friends with his granddaughter. Right. Um, and so taking that piece of it, it really made me pull back in my shell. I feel like I'm right. a little turtle who pulls their little head in their little feet and stuff into that shell, right. which I didn't realize so much later that isolating is something that a lot of people do. So right. what did that look like for my inner strength and confidence? And, and certainly there were, there were quite a bit of time where my confidence wasn't what I would want it to be, but I really kind of built it up. And then that plays into my corporate journey as well, because the first seven years were amazing. And then I stayed through another seven years trying to figure that piece of it out. Right. Where after that, in trying to figure out why did I say seven years where I should be, felt I was supposed to be out making an impact and doing bigger things. Yeah. And I realized that that was my time to heal in right. a really safe environment. And that was like the biggest gift anyone could give me. And my coworkers, they're like my yeah. family. And I just feel so blessed to be put in a situation like that. So that being said, okay, and, and this was a neighbor, I know you said, and yeah. often it is. It often is someone close to the you family mm -hmm. that you trust, yeah. that you trust, oddly enough. It's, it's so odd, isn't it? Um, and it's so prevalent. Yes. And I appreciate you sharing that story for other women. But you have healed from it, and now you speak about it and help empower other women who yes. have been through the same. Yes. And when you stayed in that job seven years longer than maybe you felt like you should have, but it was a healing time, so then was it seven years too long, or was it that you needed that time to heal? Like I think a little of both. A little of both, yeah. In the meantime, I did get into community leadership yeah. um, and was given the strength and the support by my employer to be able to to do that for right. um, years, I was running or in leadership for uh, the junior league, the women's. Oh. So I was running a 350 person organization on the side, still working oh. full time corporate. So they were see, amazing I, to me to I support think that. That is the best way to, for someone to start their entrepreneurial endeavor yes. is to start it while they're they have their full time paycheck. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's great that you did it that yes. way. See, I think that's the perfect way to do it. Yes. Build, build that business while you do that. Then when you left there, you had already started this career. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yes. And so you're saying by talking about what happened, it helped you to heal. Yes. And now, you know, because don't you think for so many years people have, you know, swept it under a carpet, not talked oh. about it. Mm -hmm. And we all think that it's not affecting anybody. Yeah. Hello. Yes. It's affecting people. Yes. And like you said, it affected your confidence, your self-esteem. Yes. Mm -hmm. People wonder why so many women have a low confidence and self-esteem. Yes. It's because a majority of them have had some sort of yes. sexual harassment, mm -hmm. abuse, and it has caused them to lose their self-esteem. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you think it is about uh, a, a molestation that causes someone to lose their self-esteem. What is that correlation? Have, can you articulate that? Um, I think for me, it was, I live next door to this person since I was in second grade, and this happened when I was in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. So from a child's mind, and, and even as an adult, like we're always trying to process and make sense of things. So right. it didn't make sense of things to right. me because I was even going through like the awkward teenage years, you know, and glasses and braces. I didn't feel pretty to start with. Right. So the fact that I was getting sexual attention from, you know, an 80 year old man. Yeah. Um, and luckily it was the, the one time, which not, not to diminish it one time or yeah. months or year. I mean, it right. it's all impacts you. 
Um, but, you know, that, that piece of it, and I think, too, with, you know, the fact that he was a grandfather figure, that there was this high level of trust. And I was mm-hmm. very good friends with his granddaughter and, and just the dynamics. And it took me six months to tell my family. And it was right. only because I was going to be graduating from eighth grade right. and they were having the neighbors over and family and friends. And I kept saying, mm, nope, I don't want the neighbor and his wife invited. And finally, my mom was like, we're neighbors, you know, unless you can give me a good reason. Oh, wow. We're going to we're going to have to include them because that's, yeah. you know, the thing gave her the good reason yeah yeah wow and isn't it interesting how people uh women in our cultures up to this date did not want to talk about it Mm -hmm. did not want to and i hope that this me too movement changes that i hope these young ladies coming up will speak out if these things happen to put a stop to it and to realize they're helping other women from not going through this by speaking up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important message we need to get out there. But shifting over to what you two ladies are doing today, uh, I think but just by telling these stories and by creating these events you're doing mm-hmm. and by the film you have coming out that I want to talk about, uh, you all are helping to empower other women. And so this film that you're creating together is called uh, If You Won't, Who Will? Mm-hmm. That's a great name. Okay. If You Won't, Who Will? Uh, so tell me how you came up with this idea to a do a film, b where you're at with it, and what is the gist of it? I know you're meeting Corrine with somebody today who's going to be in the film. Uh, yes, we are. Um, yeah. Well, she's actually a good friend of ours that um, I've known for over six years, and we met on a uh, plane to Brazil. Oh, so, wow. So on my honeymoon and her honeymoon. Oh, so, my gosh. Yes. How exciting. Yes. I have a honeymoon coming up this year. So. <laughs> honeymoon. Yay. I love that word. <laughs> We're excited. So you met her on your uh Met her on her honeymoon, yeah. yep, yes. And um, and what's her name? Her name is Lenara Washington, and she's an actor here in L.A., and she's been on uh, num- numerous films and numerous um, episodes. She does a lot with uh, Shonda Rhimes. Oh, so. Shonda has mm-hmm. a, a show here at UBN. Uh, oh, here very at, and cool. her, her Actually, her offices are here at Sunset Gower Studios, and she obviously is the biggest trailblazer in the industry for women. Mm -hmm. So she's done some of her shows, and you said she was also in a a well-known movie with Brad Pitt. Yes, yes, Killing Them Softly. So she's the only woman on the whole entire film. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I'd love to sit down and hear about that. Yeah. Yeah, well. (laughs) So she's going to be in your film, and tell us about the film, her part in it, and and what the gist of it is. So... um, Lauren, well, while producing Disrupt Milwaukee, Lauren and I were driving from Madison to Milwaukee, and we were talking about women's leadership and how this is when the Google memo came out. Yeah. And I turned to Lauren and I said, I don't understand. I don't understand why there's people say that we have a lack of women's leadership and why women lack self-confidence. And can you can you talk to me a little bit about that, about why this is? Because we're flying into amazing women. Yes. Um, and I meet amazing walking. women every yeah. week on this show. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So so where is this coming from? And Laura, um, you know, she's a great she's an amazing um, coach, uh, and she said, you know what, Let it's really about, it's a lot about imposter syndrome and the way we were conditioned, mm-hmm. and I was like, gosh, this is so interesting. So where can I find more information? And she's like, oh, there's a few, there's a few, uh, you know, articles online, but that's about it. And I was wow. like, wow. And we looked at each other, and we both kind of like the same time, like, yeah. we should really do something about that. Yeah. So um, we decided that we would do a short documentary, Mm -hmm. hopefully turning it into a short documentary series. And being very authentic, we um, compiled some questions around women's leadership and women's empowerment and obstacles. And we didn't give the information to the five women that we interviewed. And we wanted it to be on camera, very authentic, whatever they said. And every single woman from a very diverse background had a different answer to each question. And we captured a lot of intimate moments. Oh, wow. That sounds fascinating. So in other words, depending on uh, their nationality or their religion or their background, maybe where they grew up, Mm -hmm. they had a different perspective Mm -hmm. on this topic. Yes. 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 
How fascinating. I can't wait to see this film. Yeah. And that's why saying yeah. that it's a confidence problem is such a disservice to us women that we each have our own journey. And yeah. what does that look like as far as how much we're willing to risk, how much we're willing to you know, expand our comfort zone and yes. move past fear to be right. able to make an impact? And what does that look like in each person's world? Right. And so when you talk to these different women uh, and they each had different answers, uh, was there also some common thread through them? There was a common thread of um, positive self-talk mm. being one of the catalysts mm -hmm. from going into a not-so-great situation, overcoming an obstacle, to then realizing their own power and right. their own voice. Yes. Uh, yes. And, and we all are powerful mm -hmm. and we all can create, I would say, cr we can create our fate mm -hmm. yeah. and our happiness. And it is a choice. I do believe it's a choice. Yes. Um, but that being said, so they each had positive self-talk. Did they all experience that imposter syndrome? I would say yes. I think as, yeah. as women, we're always, every day, we're yeah. experiencing a little bit of imposter syndrome. Yeah, and, and to explain to people listening that might even not understand what that is, it, it, it's meaning like you're in a position, you're like thrilled to be in it, but you don't necessarily feel like you deserve it. You think, oh my gosh, what if they find out I'm not capable really of doing yeah. this? They question themselves, and that goes back to self-esteem, right? Right, mm -hmm. right. And, oh, go ahead, Laura. And then not focusing on the fact of the situation. You know, where women sometimes it's like, oh, I need this degree or this experience or this company to be able to do the next step to be able to make that big leap where someone else would look at your background and skill sets and, and go, be like, wow. you can do that now. Like, right. You know, you have everything you need and you have what you don't. That's your potential for growth. Right. I've actually had people on my show that have talked to me all about all the amazing things they've done. And then they're like, you know, I hadn't even realized uh, in a long while about how many things I've actually done till you wanted to interview me. And I thought about it, you know. Yeah. And so um, and I've had that experience myself when I've been interviewed myself, you know, so um I just was talking to someone last night about the research shows that if a, a potential position has like 10 requirements, mm -hmm. yeah. a man will have could have one of the requirements and think, oh, I could do that job. And a woman could have five or six of the requirements and say, oh, I don't have all 10. I'm not, you know. Yep. capable of doing the job. Yes. Isn't it so fascinating? I mean, research proves that that's yeah. true, that women never feel quite qualified. Men are, you know, uh, o overestimate how qualified they are. And, yeah. you know, but I, I know it's shifting, especially as we have conversations mm -hmm. like that and get this information out there. Yeah. As a coach, what would you say to women that might feel like, hey, I'd like to run for office, but I don't think I'm qualified. I'd like to start my own business, but I don't think I'm qualified or whatever leap they want to take. I yeah. want to be a writer, but I'm selling, you know, yeah. shoes. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what would you say to them? How do you empower someone? I would say, what's it costing you to not follow your heart? Yeah. Yeah. That's a huge cost, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, life is so short. Mm -hmm. Yes. That it's so important to do what we love. Yeah. And, you know, often people will say, well, I don't even know what I love doing. But then if they just think, well, when you when you have spare time or whatever, yeah. what are you doing? Yes. Are you taking care of dogs? Are you painting? Yeah. Are you helping friends? You know, yeah. you're doing something with your yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're doing with your available time yeah. is probably what you love and is your yeah. gift and should be doing what you're doing 100% of the time. Uh, taking a course myself right now that's just it. about, you know, making sure that you do more of what you are good yeah. at and mm -hmm. love yeah. and handing off to other people what you don't like doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so many entrepreneurs will try to do everything themselves, even if they're not good at it and yeah. it wears them out. Yep. And they're not successful because they're spreading themselves too thin. Mm -hmm. It's so important. And I believe my 360 Karma community, the whole idea I'm trying to say is uh, let's find each other's gifts and use each other's gifts. This is what uh, 
makes the world a better place yeah. is you do your gift. I'll do my gift. You do my, and I'm going to use you to do your gift that I'm not good at. And yeah. you're going to use me to use, you know, yes. for what you're mm-hmm. not good. Right. Isn't that what makes yes. it so perfect? And if we could all understand that we, and we were all doing our, what we're gifted at, yeah. the world is just going to be an incredibly magnificent place. And the more women we have in positions of influence, I feel like the yeah. more we're going to move in this direction mm-hmm. of, people really tuning into their gift and doing with more of what they love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm glad you two ladies are perpetuating that with all yeah. the work you're doing from your film to your events, to your coaching. It, it's a beautiful thing. And I did want to mention that yes. Corinne, you place people in uh, leadership positions yes. on a temporary basis in major companies. So if somebody's out there and they are a CFO or chief marketing officer mm-hmm. or whatever uh, they could reach out to your company which is um, contracted leadership so we're a contracted leadership firm where uh-huh. we help organizations fill leadership voids and leadership gaps on a long-term and contractual basis love it so we do have a collaborative of contracted leaders that we can help organizations fill those voids and gaps at any given time and you did tell me like 50% of the people that you place are women. 50% are women. I love it. Rock yeah. on. Awesome. So you're helping place women in positions of influence, and you are helping empower women through your coaching. Your website is also up, lauragmunder.com. Yes. yes. And uh, I appreciate you both being on and doing the great work that you're doing. It's a pleasure meeting you both and hearing about your great endeavors, and I can't wait to see when the film comes out. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And we will be back next week with more incredible women. Until then, please check out these ladies' websites and uh, tune in with us next week at the same time here at UBN, noon, Wednesdays. Make it a great day. Join us at 360karma.com and create your fate. Hugs and happiness. Bye-bye.